Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed Teaching. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can use Google Docs to do a project lesson with your classes, especially if you're in a group class or you have a group class with some students in who like doing project works. Now, since I switched to doing online teaching, I've been wondering what the best way would be to actually do some project work. I have a class of teens. There are um, intermediate level, um, and they do get the best effects, or at least they get the most out of their lessons when they do projects together. Uh, but since switching to online, we hadn't really done any of these sort of projects. And I wondered what the best way to do it was. So I've been playing around with Google Docs, and I think that this might be the best way to do things. I'm going to show you my uh, kind of stream, the way that I go through the stages of a project lesson using Google Docs. So I'm going to bring up my Google Drive, first of all. Now, I've got my drive, and I'm a, one of these sort of people who likes to organize things very much. So I've got uh, my drive, and I've got a folder called School Documents and Online Teaching, and I've made a folder here called Demonstration. And within this folder, I'm going to make a new Google Doc. Uh, the project that we're going to do is on uh, endangered animals. Uh, so I'm going to insert a simple table. I'm going to keep it all very simple because I want my students to do as much as possible here. So endangered anim animals fact sheet. Uh, they're going to make some space there for the picture to go in. Thank you, Google. Um, and these are the things that I want my students to research. I want them to get the name of the animal. Where does it live? What does it eat? Why is it endangered? What can we do to save it? Something like that. Okay, so it's a very basic little table, but that's fine because that's all we really want. Okay, so if I click just here, I can save the name. So endangered animals fact sheet, and I'm going to call this one master. Okay, so I can close that for a moment and I've got just here. I'm going to make copies. I'm going to keep the master for myself. Um, so I'll make a copy to demonstrate to the students. And I'll make a copy of the copy for each of the two groups that my students will work in. So here we go. So let's get to renaming them. So let's um, rename. Where are we? Rename. So, endangered animals, fact sheet, demo, okay, so that's that one, and let's rename this one, endangered animals, fact sheet, group one, and that leaves this one, let's rename it, fact sheet, group two. Okay, so we're about there. We're getting most of the groundwork done, but what I need to do now is I'm going to take a demo I don't need to do, but this one, so this is uh, group two, doesn't really matter where I start, but I'm going to change the, um, the edit possibilities. So I'm going to turn the link sharing on, but I need to go into sharing settings now, and I want anyone with the link can edit. Okay, so that's done. And I need to do the same with the other one. So I'm going into sharing settings. Anyone with the link can edit and that's done. Okay, so uh, the lesson starts. I get my students into the classroom and I show them the fact sheet that we're going to be working on. Endangered animals fact sheet. And I say, okay, we've been looking at the environment recently. We're going to do a project today about endangered animals and we're going to complete a fact sheet like this. So let's do a little example. Um, let's have a look. Endangered animals in England. Let's see, what have we got? Um, ah, we could look at the... Um, the Scottish wildcat, why not? So, Scottish wildcat is the name of the animal. You can take that out. Scottish wildcat, excellent. Now I'm going to do something that's a little bit, yeah, it's not exactly what you want to do for um, when you're 
on the internet. This is not good. Copy image and paste. Now I know I'm kind of breaking copyright law a little bit here, but it's to an education or for an educational purpose, and we're not going to do anything with these documents once we've finished. Um, we could look at um, the the possibility of getting uh, Creative Commons pictures. I think most of the pictures that are used in uh, Wikipedia should be res relatively safe. But you know that's something for you to consider. I'm just giving a quick demonstration. Okay, so I've got the Scottish Wildcat. Um, that's the name. Um, I can resize that. Look, everybody, and I can choose this text, and I could go for a different font. I quite like Merryweather. Let's go for Merryweather bold, and let's make it bigger. Let's put it in the middle. Look at that. That's so much nicer, isn't it? Look at how much I can do. Excellent. So. Uh, then you um, tell your students that they're going to work in their groups. So I had six students when I did this. Um, I was lucky because for this project to work, you need students ideally to be on a laptop, less ideally on a tablet. Tablets usually have enough screen real estate for them to bring up a keyboard so that they can enter text directly. Um, but uh, laptops, computers definitely work best of all. Uh, so. Um, bring up the breakout rooms, make sure you put your students into groups where one of the students will be edit, able to edit things and then send them to the breakout rooms. And then come back to this screen, go back to your link and I've copied the link and I'm going to send that in the chat in the breakout room. And I'll tell the student there, please open this document and work together. Uh, give people responsibility. You're the leader, you're the one that's going to enter the text. So maybe when you've decided which animal to research, have a look together and say, okay, you go and look at this, you go and look at this, and then come back and tell me what to write. Then switch to the other breakout room and go to the other fact sheet, copy the link, and do the same. Now, one of the things that I really like about using um, Google Drive for this is that when you've shared a, a file that other people can edit, you will get to see the edits in the preview uh, window just here. So you can go from breakout room to breakout room to check on your students' work, or you can just kind of sit here and watch and then go into the document, open it up. Uh, you won't interfere with anything if you do that. You can just open it and have a look, and then um, there you go. Um, one, of, one of the things we do at my school is that we, we um, do in-class writing. We do portfolio tasks for exam classes. You can do a similar setting uh, setup here. So if you're going to do a piece of writing with your students, you've got, let's say, 10 students. Create 10 Google documents for them, like this, with their name inside. Change the sharing setting so that they can edit. And then in your lesson, send those 10 students to 10 different breakout rooms so that they're working on their own, on their own document. Then you can watch, and if one of the documents is still blank after a few minutes, you can go into it, have a look, and then go into that breakout room and ask the student what's going on, if they're okay. This way you can kind of monitor from above without interfering with the students too much. Okay, so, um, give the students some time to do this and I can show you an example of what they produced. Um, my students chose to do something about rhinos and this is where it really gets interesting for me. It's that when I was in a classroom, if I was doing a project with the students, they would do it on a big piece of paper, they'd glue things on, they'd label it and everything like that. They'd make mistakes, it's kind of inevitable. Mistakes happen. And the big problem with the students when they make a mistake is that then if you're going to correct the mistake, you're going to kind of damage the project. It's not going to look as good. So what we did for the last 15 minutes was we had um, a correction session. So I loaded it up in Google Docs. There were mistakes. And I would point them out using the arrow tool. I'd say, okay, tell me about this sentence. What's the problem here? What's the problem here? Is this word spelled correctly? And together we would make it all perfect. It would be all corrected. It really worked well. I was very pleased with the way that this lesson went. Okay, so that was a quick overview for you of how you could use Google Docs within Google Drive to manage a project lesson. Uh, if you have any questions about how it works or if there's anything that I've not really made clear in this video, uh, please uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy 
to help where I can. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. And if you're out there teaching right now, good luck. Keep plugging away. You're doing a good job. Okay, until next time. Thank you.